Yes, friends. One by one, let us see the aspects of sampling. Yesterday, whatever I covered, let us recap the things what we discussed yesterday. Uh, definition of the sampling or the concept of the sampling. Sampling is the process of obtaining a reasonable amount of material, a small amount of material which essentially represents the universe or population or bulk sample. The purpose of sampling is to study the characteristics of that universe or the bulk sample. There is no need to study the complete entity. There is no need to study the bulk material or large entity. Major steps for the sampling. First, population identification means finding that the bulk quantity, collection of the gross sample, gross sample by means of increments, and then we have to reduce that sample in different reduction methods also we have discussed. And what's the importance of the sampling? That is what covered. And different terms that we have discussed. What is in a sample? What is in a sample procedure? What is meant by universe or the population? Sample unit, increment, then the gross sample, sub-sample, analytical sample or analysis sample that we have discussed and different types of sampling, random sampling as a haphazard, not a systematic sampling. With example, you have to explain systematic sampling where after a particular interval, maybe of the time, maybe of that material, uh, we are going to take the sample. So with example, you cannot understand that. Then what are the difficulties to find the sampling? It is very easy to say we want a, such a quantity, a small quantity from the bulk, which essentially represents that large quantity, which is a very tough task. So there are the proper methods of what the sampling. Then we discuss the reduction of the sampling by means of the coning and what the coltering, coning and the coltering. You know, why should we discuss or reduce that? Uh, what about the solid samples? Up to what size we have to reduce? So mathematical expressions are there, those we have discussed. Now let us discuss today the sampling of the gases. There are two ways of the sampling. One, ambient sampling or two types of gaseous samples to remain. One, ambient sampling and other is the stack sample. Ambient sample means from the open air, whatever we will get, that's ambient. Stack means which is the pack gas remain <coughs> from that if we say we have to collect and a stack sampling so if any a gas pipeline is there or if any gas cylinder is there from that if we have to choose a sample or take the sample then that's a stack sample ambient sample means open air sample in ambient sampling uh, more quantity of the gas may available for the sampling purpose and in case of stack there's a limited quantity of the material available Depending on that, uh, different kinds of the methods are choose. Uh, that's first. Let us see how to collect that the uh, gaseous sample. Same. Let it the ambient or let it be what the gaseous. Uh, so uh, stack. We have to collect by means of this tube. It's a sample tube. Now let us understand the mechanism of this sample tube. Here, if you could able to note at the bottom there is a mercury pool or mercury is there in that beaker or the jar and the lower tip of a equipment or instrument which looks like pipette is dipped in that mercury and here connectors are there or connections are there different side tubes are there in that the one side tube that is said by what the d or to that the control portion or to this knob or to this cork we are saying as what d left side portion control portion knob portion we represent it by b left side portion is going to pump pump means which suction pump vacuum pump means it can suck the air yes have you seen suction pump in our laboratory yes or no, no? Sir. okay no because at fi level you might have not done that those filtration but for filtration purpose we use that in ordinary filtration what happens slowly slowly that's a solution comes down or the solid material remains on what the filter paper. But if we want to speed up that filtration, then what can we do? We can apply a force. We can apply a pressure in a such a way that the solvent will come out early. And that is possible by sucking or by means of suction pump. So it's a machine by which evacuation is possible, by which a vacuum can be created. So this tube is going to suction pump because of that evacuation may what possible evacuation means we are removing any kind of contamination or content present here in the sample tube then that can be what removed so it is going toward the suction pump as means in simple way we have to talk uh, you pipette out the solution 
while pipetting the solution what do you pipet actually what do you suck you suck the air or you suck the solution now propylene bulbs you are applying but up to 12 standard what were you doing you are sucking by means of mouth while pipetting the solution my question is while pipetting the solution you suck the air or you suck the solution air air mm. yes yes we suck the air by sucking air what happens vacuum gets created and vacuum is unstable situation to fulfill that gap that fulfill that vacuum the solution rush up solution enters in the pipette so you go on sucking till that solution comes up to desired level you stop the sucking immediately you close by means of your finger so that now what will happen no outer air is allowed to enter no outer air and whatever the vacuum was there that is fulfilled by means of that solution so that solution also is not falling because something can fall down if somebody some other body can enter it's a very interesting thing vacuum is unstable so pipet will not allow to drain that solution till somebody could enter there then what you do you release your finger or you lose your finger so that little air can enter from upside yes now pipet understands if solution goes out by means of the gravity some other thing is there that can occupy that space and that other thing you are you are allowing to come that's air and by the help of that you can take a drop from that the solution or that pipet you can what decay if you release your complete finger then fastly that the solution can what decay because air is going toward the enter if you close that the solution will stop to fall down so it's a magic of vacuum so to obtain that vacuum as like you were sucking by means of mouth here suction is there suction pump is there suction machine is there so understand this pump is used for evacuation to create or generate a vacuum to suck the air or any content present there students are you understanding what i am saying the to the pump means it is going to the vacuum pump yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah now see here to the cylinder this portion is going to the cylinder means from where we have to collect the gaseous sample or if ambient is there then it will be the open so from that we cannot collect but which knob is to open and which knob is to close when to open and when to close that's the secret of the collecting the gaseous sample so what are you finding there are total four outlets which are coming from this junction or you can consider it's a square and the four roads are there one line or one road is going to the mercury pool one road is going to the gas cylinder from where we can collect the sample one road is going to the vacuum pump yes and now see our actually sample tube this upper road is there no that is going to sample tube here c knob is there or c cork is there with the help of that we can control the entry in this h h is our sample tube in which we are collecting gas and the out other end of that sample tube is controlled by means of a so how it works that let me explain before that are these different parts clear to you which parts you have to understand one portion going to the mercury one portion going to the vacuum pump one portion going to the cylinder from which we want to take a gas sample and one portion is our going to sample tube that is h and the other end of sample tube is controlled or the can be closed by means of knob a or open by means of knob a are these points clear yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir. Yes, sir. yes very good yes very good now see how the functioning remains see before entering anything uh, we want to make sure that this sample tube is uh, not with any other contamination so while pipetting solution what you do while pipetting solution what you do before pipetting solution what you do or before filling the bucket what you do directly taken the dilution. pipette uh, yes what to do please repeat dilution dilution of solution okay different one but that one solution is ready with you which you want to pipette so before pipetation what you do for pipette rinse rinse the burette yeah burette pipette first you will wash then you will rinse are you getting the point yes yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay okay good so washing for what purpose so if any other contamination is there any other chemical is there that will be washed out that will be removed out if that chemical went out then why to rinse why to rinse washing i can understand just now i told you the purpose of the washing because we don't want any other thing and for that purpose we are removing that any other contamination and for removal of that 
we are using a solvent that's a water and it can if anything is there that can dissolve and can go out with that water that's a washing so washing is done then why are you rinsing to remove the water contaminated to the wall of the pit yes water also is a contamination for us water also is a impurity for us there because we want perfectly solution though that solution may be prepared in the water but we don't want water in the pipette are you getting this point so for that to remove that contamination rightly said now who said i don't know exactly uh, to remove that the contamination or impurity of the water we rinse the sol- we rinse that pipette by means of solution which we want to pipette out so that process of rinsing so that pipette remains familiar with the solution which you are pipetting then if you pipette out that solution then uh, solution only will come the water will not come so role of water is important for the washing but rinsing also is equally important as like we follow the scientific analytical methodology same things are to follow here here this sample tube also needed to be washed or to be evacuated evacuated suppose if sample is in limited quantity then evacuation is recommended then how evacuation we can do you have to close this knob d you have to close this knob d why for so that this gas which we want to sample will not enter you have to open this knob b you have to open this knob c you have to close this knob a so that if you apply to suction pump then air present here by will come air or whatever the gas present in that sample tube that's h will come to enter that gas in the square and then to the pump we have to open this knob c and we have to open this knob b so that evacuation we can do because our sample is so less that rinsing is not affordable in such cases otherwise rinse one time and then evacuate that remove that so if contamination is that can be or the vent so the suction pump or the this way to the pump is used in order to make this sample tube ready to accept the new sample is the role of this control knob b clear to you yes sir okay afterwards what you have to do you have to close this knob b and you have to open this knob d this knob c also should be what the open and this knob a it depends how much quantity of the cylinder is there if small quantity then you have to close if more quantity is available then a if flushing you have to do then open a and this from cylinder through pressure it can what enter here in this sample tube h because pressure remains to that gas no cylinder so, so that it will what enter it if pressure is not then then we have to make use of the suction pump which can apply here also to the end a so that the gas can what the move out so that the gas which we want to sample which we want to collect can what enter here in this sample tube h when desired quantity of gas is collected then we have to close this end a first then we have to close this end c so that now complete gas from the cylinder will be there now you will be the question what's the use of this line this way which is going to the mercury <coughs> when we close this knob a then this tube will get completely filled and then that gas has to enter here and that here bubbling will be there bubbles will form it indicates this tube is completely filled this sample tube is full now then we can close this knob c now question you will be with why mercury why not water is used can anybody guess the answer because in water also we can find bubbles no yes can you answer sir please repeat here mercury is used there in this beaker what is the role of that mercury when we allow the gas to pass here and when we close this knob a then gas will fill 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 and completely the sample tube edge gets fulfilled then gas has only one way it has to come down it has to come down and as it come down which are the gas we have to sample here bubbles will form and bubbles we can note bubbles we can realize by if bubbles come then we can understand now sample tube is full and we have to close this knob c so that the in the sample tube edge we will get the gas sample question rishikesh here is why are we using mercury if we use water then what will happen yes can anyone answer can you answer if no then say no no sir 
Okay, I, I was expecting answers from others also. See here, when the pressure increases, then bubbles are coming. Water also they will come. But water is a such a solvent; its vaporization remains considerable. Vapors remain at room temperature also. So those vapor means water vapor that H two O gas will come here in H. So that will be the impurity. That will be the contamination. we want pure sample impure sample we don't want sample may not be more longer pure if we use water here because water vapors will enter in the sample tube what about mercury mercury vaporization point is very high so vapors of mercury will not be there in the sample tube h therefore we are using mercury here for recognition of excess of the gas is the answer clear yes sir yes sir yes sir. yes sir yeah now see i repeat the procedure again first start this knob b you have to start suction pump why for to remove the air or gas present here older gas present here in the sample tube if that gas has to come then this knob c should be on just wait let me see who wants to enter pratiksha parob if this gas has to enter this knob c should be on so b and c will be the on so that we can clean we can evacuate this knob a should be closed this knob d should be closed afterwards close this knob b or don't start the suction pump open this knob c open this knob d so that this gas will come and will go in this sample tube h if sufficient quantity of gas is there then what can you do you can rinse it by means of flushing that solution through this sample tube h so thoroughly solution you can allow to pass through the h it's not solution gas gas you can allow to gas uh, you can allow the gas to pass through the edge so that each and every portion of the sample to the edge will be well familiar with the new coming gas new coming sample once it is over close this knob a as knob a gets closed and if this tube is tube edge is full then gas has to come down pressure will be there so gas will come down where will it come down it will come down through this pipette like structure and it will come in the mercury and your bubbles you will find that bubble formation indicates excess quantity of gas is there sufficient quantity of gas is there in this sample tube h and we can collect that gas as sample by closing this knob c once that knob c is closed this gas also will not what enter now if it is coming it can come here in this or the close this that sample gas will not also enter so with the help of these knobs b d c a we can control the entry of the gas or the direction of the gas exit or entry and we can collect the gas as sample in this h as a sample tube is it clear yes sir yes so displacement yes, method flushing method flushing method means sufficient quantity of gas remains you could go on flushing it will get uh, filled displacement method means uh, method means we are going to displace whatever the air present by means of evacuation that's a these two uh, further additional aspects you can understand in the gaseous sampling here see ambient sampling and stack sample to be same so stack sampling means what or displacement method means because less quantity of the sample is available no so we have to evacuate ambient sampling means flushing is recommended there but concept of the collecting the gases sample should be clear to you means you may be with a doubt no suppose if you go in the colding house then you will find the cylinders there carbon dioxide cylinders so that car those carbon dioxide cylinder how can you collect the sample gas from that so such kind of apparatus remain by which we can collect the samples so that's a gaseous sampling now i come to the liquid samples liquid sampling there are the four different types of the liquid sampling one homogeneous liquid means what is the nature of that liquid depending upon that we will choose the method of the sampling we will choose the equipment or the apparatus for the sampling first is a homogeneous liquid means maybe it is a solution clear cut is is like a sugar solution or the salt solution is a homogeneous clear cut heterogeneous liquids means these are the immiscible means carbon tetrachloride and the water to different layers you will find water and the kerosene or petrol or the diesel to different layers you will find so this is a heterogeneous it's a immiscible in such cases what to do other static liquid static liquid means which is not flowing or stable means in a tank tanker liquid remains or the or, or the solution remains it is not moving no it is at one place or the or the uh, solution in the bucket or any flask any beaker that's a static liquid and the last part part is the portion is the 
flowing liquids this river as if like it flows sewage water as if like it flows so sampling of the flowing liquid the tools are different those we have to study so meaning of this four types there homogeneous means completely uniform heterogeneous means not uniform to different layers will find static means stable at one stage as like a beaker as like a bucket as like a tank and the flowing means you will understand like a river are these four types of liquids clear those we have to sample yes are they clear or not yes sir yes sir yes good these are the different types of the liquids and immediately preferably answer and see if it's not clear no say clearly not clear i will repeat don't worry about that to collect those uh, samples we are with one sample tube not all few we can collect how that i'll say to you first let me explain describe this thief the sample thief thief in general way in literature english we use it differently means a something who has stolen the thing here sir is a indirectly that thing only because from this jar or from this container we are going to thieve we are going to stole that what the liquid so to collect that to gather that the samples how the functioning is there that i tell to you it's a one container if we from this container if we want a sample then we need something additional to do that is what one hole that we have to pierce or one tube we need to insert here that is labeled as a which is just only to not to have a vacuum because if vacuum is there you will not get that a uh, liquid which you desire for vacuum purpose to passage of air only that a is there and this b b is actually our sample tip from which we are cut collecting what the sample and your c is their control knob when you open this control knob c and by suction or by any means if you suck the air in this tube b then automatically because in order to compensate that vacuum the whichever the solution is there whichever the liquid is present that will enter in this b and if we attach any other thing as a sample tube to collect then in which we can get this liquid sample but it is not so easy i said vacuum is a very unstable situation so when this jar has to think to give the solution or the property to be at that time jar will say what i will get unless and until jar gets substituent unless and until jar gets additional thing the liquid will not enter in the sample to b and that thing which you want to get can be given by means of a that's air if air enters here then only this solution can enter in this b for example that i give it to you a cold drink uh, maybe the small glass bottle you have taken and you have to drink that as if like they show in the advertisement or the film so suddenly suppose if you want to take that means you have inverted that bottle suddenly and you are going to suck that cold drink from that bottle what is your experience that cold drink fastly will come or doesn't come or slowly comes have you experienced that no i am not understanding what is going on are you following what i am saying yes sir what is your answer so that's a simple thing in your day to life also you could have experienced that that's a scientific approach otherwise you also can do this experiment later on suddenly if you invert that the cold drink bottle a cold drink partly will come but afterwards it doesn't come down because something should enter inside then only that thing will come down it's a take and give mechanism same thing is here if we want to stole the liquid from here that jar will not give jar will demand what is the substituent for that replacement when you will incline that cold drink bottle incline then some air can pass then solution can come so air passage is necessary for that this a is there so through this thief b we can collect the liquid samples may it is a oil container petrol container anything homogeneous liquid we can collect now you will be the question if it is so then what's the use of c what's the use of this knob it is helpful in the heterogeneous liquids heterogeneous liquids means what different layers do remain present one layer of water other layer of oil or kerosene or petrol or organic content if i want water sample then what i have to do i have to insert that thief b in that water region then while inserting what will happen the petrol or diesel or rockel whichever or kerosene you can say the organic layer can enter in that thief i don't want that contamination i want only and only water i want only and only lower layer so what to do 
I have to close this knob C. Means I like closing the upper end of the pipette and then inserting it. Close that knob C so that organic layer will not enter. You can go in the bottom layer. And once you go in the bottom layer, then open this knob C. And by by sucking method, you can collect. You can thew the lower layer out of the different layers from the sample by the B. Or you can collect that the sample. You can thew the sample. So in order to go to the different depth without any contamination, this knob C is used. We are going down. Then close this knob C so that any liquid will not enter. When you want to when you allow when you want to enter the liquid, then only you have to open this knob C. So heterogeneous liquid also is collected by means of this sample. Static liquids. Static liquids means stable at what the one place. They are not moving. There are also such kind of method can use, can be used. Flowing liquids for the different apparatus necessary. Before that, is this thief or is this diagram of liquid sample collection clear to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. For yes, flowing sir. liquid. Yes. For flowing liquid, such kind of apparatus remains. It's like our fingers, but but those are not uniform. Those are going in different directions. Their depth or their angular variation also do what remain there. So this such fantastic tube is used to collect that the flowing liquid. It's like a hand-like structure, but the liquid which is the flowing one enters through these fingers, enters through these tubings, and can be collected here. At different depth, you can what bring that, and at different depth also you can collect the liquid sample. Means a flowing river is there. And or or through the ocean also you can what collect upper portion. You have to hold that the sample tube likewise. So through these tubings, because of flowing, the liquid will flush. Liquid will enter, and you can collect. You want to go in deep. You have to go in deep. Then also you can you can put that apparatus deep, and then that because of flow, the liquid can enter in this region. Then afterwards it can go to the collector or the sample. So for flowing liquid collection, such kind of the different uh, tool is used. It's called as the multiple tube sampler. Different multi many tubes are there with which we are collecting the sample. Yes, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Now sampling of the solids that I discussed before. I asked you that mathematical expressions are there with which you will understand how much amount of the solid to take and. How to reduce that solid sample? Coning and quartering method. Second method was long pile and alternate shovel method. Third one, rifle reduction method. This is for for what purpose? In order to reduce the sample size. But how to collect the solid sample? Now I am discussing that point. To collect the solid sample, that split tube keep such apparatus remains. Means it is not exactly similar, but like. Is a drilling machine. If you are not aware, when you drill, then whatever the content is inside that comes out. But uh, the threads, the screw remains for the drilling, or the nail remain for the drilling machine are different. And here the things are different. Here the name is split tube. To be splitted, to be divided. See here, you will realize that means it's a complete rod. And the this white portion you are finding that's the splitting. That is what the gap. It's a complete hollow rod. And in that, there is one aperture, there is one gap, there is one split, and this tube, miss see here, handles do remain. So we can roll that. You can uh, you can enter there in that what the compact region. And if you when you will rotate that, automatically what will happen? Solid whichever is present there will what the enter in this split tube. Example: If grains are there in one gunny gunny bag, grains are there. So how can you take a sample? Means if you if you any time visited the wholesale market, even uh, retailer shop owner also can show you the samples. What they do? They insert this one kind of tool, such tip tool. They just rotate that. Because of that rotation, what happens? Which of the grains are there in that gunny bag? Those enter through that split tube in that rod, and they remove that, and then they incline that so that through this spl split tube. Those grains will come out, and they will show you the sample of that grain. So T-shaped structure is remains. Structure remains here. It's a black portion that is what the handle you can consider. With the help of that, we can collect the solid samples. Are you understanding the mechanism? Yes, sir. Only one answer. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, good, good. Second is a concentric tube tip. Some of the similar arrangement remain, but here uh, only one tube doesn't remain. Concentric. The other also jar, other coatings uh, tube also what remain. So if you see its structure or its a description, which is used to a free flowing material such as finely divided ore or cement powder and granular material. So from that the belt when they comes when it comes over there, which, which can which is moving. And that material, if you are to collect, then this concentric tube tip is used. One type of concentric tube tip consists of two concentric tube. Concentric tube means uh, who have the same center. As the concentric circles, you know, one circle and other circle who have the same center. Likewise, the tubes which have the same center and those are closely fitting inside the other. The inner tube can be rotated inside the outer tube. Means that by the knobs, inner tube will remain, outer jacket will remain not the same. The inner tube can be rotated inside the outer tube. The outer tube is pointed and can pierce a container. Both the tubes have holes cut into them in corresponding position to remove a sample. Here split tube was there, splitting was there. Here complete pit was there, complete one line was there. There what will be there? Holes will be there. And with the help of holes, that sample can what enter in there in those tubes. To remove a sample, the inner tube is rotated so that holes on it are closed and the tip inserted into the container. When the tip was reached in an appropriate position, the inner tube was rotated to open the holes and the material gets into it. It is then closed before withdrawing the tip from the containers. Means, I hope you are getting this point. Two tubes are there. One tube up, out, and outside tube. Inner tube is rotatable. Outside tube is fixed. Inner tube is with the holes. Outside tube also is the holes. Holes time being considered parallel. Means if inner tube hole is there, exactly near or, or in that line only, outside tube hole is there. Why inserting what we do? We rotate that inner tube. So that holes from the outside tube through which if sample comes, will not go in the inner tube. Why? Because direction of the hole is changed. You are rotated that. And when you feel, you went to desired depth, desired level, heap of the cement is there or cement is coming there. So up to particular limit, you enter there because only surface portion we don't want. Depth also we want. Desired. Then you can rotate that tube so that now holes will match. And those holes, through those holes, the sample can enter. Then again rotate that so that it will be catched by the inner tube and you bring it out to the inner tube you will get the sample at that depth difference is there in the split tube and the concentric tube tip could you able to understand this difference yes sir yes sir yes, yes. fine for about the powder or paste the concentric tube is there, but very close fitting remains there i don't know okay next thing hand scoop method means here you will find that for yes somebody speaker is on yeah the hand scoop method see here you will find that to collect the wastage or the garbage we use such scoop yes so such scooping is used for what the sampling suppose any belt is there conveyor belt and on which the ore is there or on which cement is there on which a metal is there or anything is passing out and you want to collect the sample then by means of such scoop this is like a spatula is not a proper word for that it's a scoop we cannot collect that. A scoop is now that, that term you will find the ice cream parlor. The scoop that it is somewhat the larger spoon you can consider to that we say as what the scoop. And it's a hand scoop by which also we can collect the solid samples. So what are we learning? Liquid sample, how to collect, gaseous sample, how to collect, and now we are studying the solid sample, how to collect. Okay. Then further a split barrel pad sampler or split tube tip, dual sampler auger sampler so i have auger sampler one more by diagram they have shown there it's like a drilling you will understand means if you have to drill the hard region or the soil if you want to drill inside then such kind of the drilling machine can be used and with the help of that we can go to the, the depth and we can collect the sample so these are the different tools by which we can collect the various samples this is a topic called the sampling here solid liquid and the gaseous sampling all are discussed little fastly i went but uh, these things are digestible if you read further doubts are there then we will what discuss those things so analytical chemistry portion which was kept pending those we are what covered only one thing is the preparation of solutions 
that we will see later on now if you have any doubt or anywhere you want more explanation you can ask now what you are supposed to do you have to prepare the notes of this study material that i uploaded in the google classroom or you may be with your books and you have to prepare the notes now let me know are the things clear do you have any doubt any question or what do you think shall i give ex more explanation any point where i need to give more explanation if you feel now ask now yes now your reply see I, when i do press give presentation no at that time i can't read your replies just one sound came there i come to know that some messages might be there okay then uh, will you study this will you prepare the notes yes how much time you need to prepare the notes so that today i'll give the assignment complete on sampling means what is meant by sampling what is the purpose of the sampling what are the difficulties of the sampling how to collect the gaseous sample liquid sample solid sample different tools or the equipments to collect the solid samples all solid all sampling i want means yesterday's and today's a suspect today is a wednesday up to when will you complete alia is saying up to friday sapnali is saying up to saturday punam is saying saturday muskan is saying friday saturday saturday okay up to saturday i give you the time to prepare the notes of this sampling aspect now preparation of solution portion is there for that if you have books you can go through that portion you have to study at your own and if questions are there we can discuss i repeat in analytical chemistry part a is there is about the quality control quality aspects part b is there about the chemical calculations those things we have already completed and after in on chemistry one unit i started the sampling aspect and sampling portion that we have covered preparation of solution that portion is there that is for your self study our unit number 1 is nearly completed but now i am not declaring that after us one time i will come and if you have doubts we will have the discussion so now what i want to do i want to go to the inorganic chemistry now inorganic chemistry unit number 2 unit number 1 completed now unit number 2 also we have to complete what is your view what is your opinion have we completed satisfactorily analytical chemistry not thoroughly completed but what are the coverage that we did have you studied are you with the study material so that in examination you can perform well i am talking first about analytical chemistry kartika saying yes pratiksha saying yes vishnavi saying yes muskan saying yes alia rupesh okay fine now i am asking second question listen carefully unit number 1 of inorganic chemistry there videos recorded were given to you and uh, occasionally i was coming to answer your queries if you have doubt you have to ask likewise i was coming do you think unit number 1 also you have studied do you think unit number 1 also you have covered in organic chemistry okay uh, still few replies i am waiting for only because four replies i found okay fine so from next lecture i am going to start unit number 2 of the inorganic chemistry because up to september we have the time to prepare in the month of october your exam will be there unit number 1 more videos were there unit number 2 little less videos are there unit number 3 further less videos are there so we can co complete one by one those things so is the planning clear okay fine i hope and expect that you will complete the notes of the sampling up to the saturday and unit number 2 will begin from the next lecture so shall i stop now okay i'm stopping the recording and i suggest you quit now recording will be available by night